And on to the next one. Same mix, same idea. This time we can be a little bit freer because the branches are just that much bigger being a little bit closer. So even though you've got curly branches here, if you're very careful and just twist and turn the brush, even the very fine area like that, you can create a little bit of shadow. I think we take it just back there like that. You see where it becomes bigger of course now you can afford to, to drag the brush sideways which again replicates the sort of effect that you're trying to achieve. If it dries in a bit don't worry you can always go and, uh, and dampen it and take some out. It'll still be damp enough once you start putting you see there it's starting to run across quite nicely. Now I hope you can see now that I'm, I'm doing that sort of upturn slight C shape. As you get higher up the tree the curve of the tree is going to appear that way. As your eye line is about here anything below the eye line the curve is going to appear the other way around like that. Look how easy that is. Just taking the rigger and just dragging it sideways. If you don't like what you've done get a little bit of water just go over it like that take that out, let's have a look at that, that's a bit too much of a sharp edge so we'll just drag that and it's almost painted it, look, just blank that out, lovely, dead easy, great fun and let's, now that it's damp again, as soon as we put some stronger colour back in on the left hand side, you can see the way, whoa there it goes, running straight across, straight across towards the light, exactly what we wanted, perfect, right, we'll just darken it there where the, the tree actually forks, give a little bit more character there. And this is where the rigger really comes into its own because we can just go back and strengthen some of those lighter branches, or those thinner branches rather, which are catching the light up high but you want a shadow side on the, uh, the far side. Let's go back into that there. Right now for this tree I'm going to be using the same light colour I've used here but I'm just going to add a touch of raw sienna to it just to warm it up slightly because it is in the foreground so you want it coming forward slightly and it's just a slightly more yellowy blue not too much you can see some of the colors incidentally have come through it's obviously where I've not quite covered everywhere with the masking fluid but that doesn't matter because you get that sort of texture even on silver birches every uh, tree has uh, all sorts of little funny colors in it now you see with this I'm able to just drag sideways and it's automatically or accidentally missing little bits and pieces out but those little light bits are great look at that that's perfect that for a little bit of light texture as the bark is catching the sun this way because it's a bit higher than me it's going to appear to be rounded that way and there it's all a whole section looks like it's catching the sunlight there which is great Okay, this time, again, while it's very, very wet, I'm just running this down. You can see it's just running across automatically. But because I've put paint here, and I've put the paint on that way with the brush stroke, as soon as I put the dark paint on, it wants to run across and follow the lines of the brush stroke, like that. Put a little bit of that's clean water that I've put on, so we're starting to get that. There's next to nothing we've got to do with that bit there, that's, that's fine, that's great. We can just perhaps just drag out some of the dark colour there. That's almost painting the textures for us. I'm using the reference photo now and you can see here we've got some black streaks and a bit of texture here and marks there. That's almost like a, a smiley that one isn't it? Just perhaps sometimes you find it gets a little bit too regular and even, you don't want regularity. Nature doesn't do regular, it does random normally. I've got a strong dark mix of light red and a little bit of burnt umber and I'm just going to go into some of these leaf clusters here underneath the bottom of the leaf clusters just to give a little bit of modelling to them, a little bit more definition like that. I don't want to lose all of these highlights but the round brush, the number six round, I think you could see, was just getting a little bit too heavy in one or two places. 
And I just want a little bit of the hint of leaves rather than big blobs of colour. And the, the rougher edge of these uh, bristle brushes I find is ideal. Again, using the rigger with the darker colour on gives yet another little sort of uh, texture here and there of lights and darks so it doesn't get too boring. Right, I've added a few more shadows here and there. The trees and the shadows of the trees coming across the path and similarly just down, further down the path with these middle distance trees I've put a bit of a shadow on this part of the trunk cast from here and that's important and I've done the same just by literally dancing the brush over the branches and over the uh, trunk just to give a little bit of light and shade. What it basically does is turn the sunlight on and give real light and meaning to these lighter leaves in and around the middle distance. But like a lot of tutorials you find that when you look at the end product you think oh my goodness I could never produce that. Yes I hope what I've shown you is that by taking the whole thing step by simple step it's very very easy to paint silver birch trees. It's even easier to paint the background because the whole process has been little more than blobbing on colour here and there. All that I've done is shown you how and when to put the different blobs of paint on and in what order. So if you can imagine yourself wandering down this idyllic little sunlit lane in the fall or the autumn, have the enjoyment of recreating that idyllic little scene on paper and give it a go. I think you'll enjoy it.